precious jewel Not to give up, I'd be a fool You are my all in all Taking my sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I bless your name You are my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up You are my all in all. Jesus, like when I am weak, you are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Well, good morning and welcome to Yakima Covenant Church. It's Thomas here and I want to welcome you this morning. Uh, before we get started into our service, there's a couple of announcements we want to make. The first one I think is really important is we have our uh, Messiah from the Immerse series coming up pretty soon. We're going to start this on January 31st. So if you're interested in joining us in that journey of reading through the scriptures, uh, we're going to focus on the, uh, the works of of the life of Jesus and uh, just his life here as Messiah. We start that on January 31st and it's going to go through Easter and all the way up just right before Memorial Day. So it's a it's a great journey. We'd love for you to join us with that. Um, books are available at the church and you can connect with us. Uh, just get a hold of the church and we can get you connected to that. Just remember to get your book before January 31st. Um, also we have a short announcement here. Uh, we were really blessed to have Stephanie uh, share with us just a second ago with some songs, um, but we do have some uh, news just to let you know about Stephanie and her transition, uh, so I'm going to let De Dean take that away right now. Well, several Sundays ago we recognized the interim team and the important roles that they've done. Today we come and uh, we've been recognizing people that have uh, been moving away, and uh, today is one of those times in which uh, I want to let you know that, uh, and most of you have heard, many of you have heard that uh, Stephanie Hamstrom is moving and uh, today we just want to assure our appreciation uh, for not only on the interim team but the way in which you've used your gifts and just invest yourself in this we are family and so we come with a sense of grief and loss but the way in which you've used your gifts here your servant attitude and i just am very appreciative and so this is on behalf of the the church and uh, receiving uh, i didn't ask you your plans or where you're moving to or anything there but Maybe before you share, if you would be willing to share, uh, Josh, I don't know if you wanted to share something. Absolutely. Um, I want to say thank you to you, Stephanie, for uh, from the very beginning of starting to help fill in with the band while Rob was transitioning out and the, having the, the warm welcome and the role to fill my way into how can I serve here and how that transitioned into being a part of the interim team and uh, I appreciate all the organizational focus and energy that you put into making this last year work uh, in all of its different ways. And it was a delight to serve with you and we will miss you. And uh, I heard that you were leaving. I'm like, oh, well, that's a, that's a disappointment and a loss for us. But we will pray that the Lord continues to bless and use and lead you and provide for you. And uh, we'll miss you. Hmm. Thank you. 
Um, well, I just want to say um, it, has, it has been a, a blessing uh, to work um, with you, Pastor Dean, with the whole staff, certainly with the interim team, um, with the congregation. And uh, although um, my time was shorter here than I, I had hoped, um, I um, definitely feel um, very uh, much part of a family, and, uh, and I will remember you all for a long time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Stephanie, for all the times you've served and shared uh, your heart and your ministry here at Yakima Covenant. I know you will be, uh, you'll be deeply missed. Um, please join us uh, as we get into worship. Uh, can I start with prayer? Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this community. God, we thank you for your presence here today. Uh, I want to pray for those people at home, um, whether they're in a positive situation or maybe a, a discouraging situation, God, that please ha have your hand and your comfort there with the people that are on the other side of the screen. We look forward to what you're going to show us today, and we, God, we give you the glory and everything that comes from this day and from this service. Lord, help us to be people who reach out in our community, and help us be people who reach out to those in need. We thank you, and we pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. As we begin our worship service, we look to Jesus who fulfilled the prophecies that the Messiah would come to save his people. But Jesus did that not as a conquering king, but as a sacrificial lamb who laid down his life, who shed his blood. Jesus died to pay the penalty that we could not pay, to cover our sins. And he rose again on the third day, just as he prophesied that he would. I invite you to join me to singing praise to the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Hallelujah 
for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, for you are holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy. sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It was and is and is to come. With all creation I have seen praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. in rainbows of living color flashes of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king holy holy God Almighty, who is and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. I will adore you. Wonder, 
at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Oh, creation I have seen, praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. and is and is to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore you Good morning, church. The time has come for prayers of the people, and I don't have to tell you that right now is a crucial time for prayer, not only for us here locally in the valley, but for nationally as well. There's always two things that will take you to your knees in prayer. One is hard times, and we can certainly relate to that right now. And the other thing that will take you to your knees is good times. Never in the history of our country have we been in the position that we are in right now. And whether you agree or disagree with the current events is not the point. The point is, will you go to your knees and acknowledge that these are dark times for us? That due to the COVID numbers that keep rising, People are losing family members, friends, co-workers, people that we don't know. Will you acknowledge that storming our country's capital and the loss of life is wrong on so many levels that one can't comprehend justifying this action? But are you willing to humble yourself and come before our Savior? Because unlike so many others, we have the promise of tomorrow. We can go to our knees in gratitude and we can give thanks for a God that does hear our petitions, a God that cares, and a God that is still in control and that we as Christians have the hope and it lies in a new day. For his mercies are new every morning this is the reason that we go to prayer. Join me this morning. Heavenly Father, there are times in prayer where we must rely on the leading of the Holy Spirit, where words of our petitions and praises must be prompted by its leading. To say I don't even know where to begin is an understatement. But let us begin with praise giving thanks that our hope lies in you, that we can look forward to a new mercy's promise to each one of us in your word. We give thanks and praise, acknowledging your name. We acknowledge your salvation, and we acknowledge your son, Jesus Christ. Hear our words this morning as we pray for our country. 
We pray for peace. We pray for a new president and vice president as new leadership comes to lead this country. We pray for our community that the COVID numbers would be reduced and that would we begin to return to somewhat of an assemblance of normal life, whatever that may be now. That those who have lost someone would receive your comfort and begin to heal as we mourn their loss. We pray for this church, for the preschool, for the staff, and for all our first responders continuing the good work to help keep us healthy. And lastly, we pray for ourselves, for our families, and for our own well-being. Keep us focused on you. Keep us safe and continuing to do the work that you have called each one of us to do. We claim your promises this morning as we continue to come to you in prayer. Going on our knees in the hard times, but also in the good times. Because in you lies our new hope and a new day. Amen. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, just this past week was the Epiphany, which is the, the looking at the light of Christ. And so we're bringing an end to our, our series of coming off of Christmas. And as we look at moving into the Messiah, which I do want to, want to invite you to participate in uh, the Messiah series. Uh, today, we're going to continue in looking at the book of John, continuing on in those verses that you've heard read. The whole emphasis is on the, the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, Agnes Day, Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Agnes Day, tole, peccato mundi. So familiar to us. Uh, if you Google even the Latin phrase, Agnes Day, you'll instantly see that uh, you get 10 million hits. And that's in, just simply in Latin. Maybe today the, the word pandemic gets more hits. I don't believe so. That was the word of the year for last year. But uh, as we think of Agnes Day, familiar images of stained glass windows in cathedrals across the world, great cathedrals, as well as it shows up in smallest of country churches. None more popular than depicting the lamb that you see on your screen, that particular image. Anytime that phrase or any image is, takes on a life of its own, like Lamb of God has done in, in, throughout history, you can assume it's all over the Bible. Yet did you know John 1 is the only place in the entire Bible where it's used? No other Old Testament prophet ever referred to God, God's Messiah as the Lamb of God before John chapter 1. I know, amazing. A limited single verses scattered here and there in the Old Testament, best known probably in Isaiah 53, a passing reference to a lamb led silently by slaughter and it conjures up sacrifice and uh, suffering. No New Testament writer repeated that exact phrase either. Even we get to the book of Revelation, I'm sure some of you are thinking that, the Apostle John mentions the image of the Lamb, but, it, but that exact phrase, Lamb of God, is not repeated. In the book of Revelation, you're told that the Lamb that 
John of Patmos saw in a vision, a heavenly vision, not just any old lamb. This one was the lamb that's been slain. A dead lamb walking. That's what John saw. To this day, scholars are not uh, any more of a consensus of what John the Baptist meant with that designation of Jesus as the Lamb of God. But consider if if even 2,000 years later, not certain what that phrase means, how likely were the people long ago that day hearing it for the first time would understand it? If, as it appears to be the case, uh, the phrase is a novelty coined by John the Baptist himself, then how did it strike those who were around him? People had been looking for the Messiah, but they'd been looking for a king, uh, 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 one who would come as a warrior, as a ruler, as a hero. So calling Jesus a lamb is hardly uh, conjure up their ideals of a Messiah maybe seemed uh, downright cold or even cruel. Even today, sometimes you hear people described with animal terms or images, but nine times out of ten, it's not very complimentary. No one wants to be called a a pig at the dinner table. If a high school boy refers to a girl as a real dog, it's not kind, but in today's culture, it'd be considered bullying. Other animal names, uh, bullheaded, uh, bird brain, a uh, cow, a scaredy cat, a uh, barracuda, or a pit bull. Each of them carries a, a certain descriptive connotation, none of them very positive. John calls Jesus the Lamb of God. Could be been perceived in a couple different ways. Lambs were often a symbol of gentleness, of meekness, vulnerability. You know, in this sense, calling Jesus a lamb was a nice thing to say, but hardly a descriptive uh, term for a Messiah. Uh, Certainly a politician, not very successful of getting elected if the people thought of him as a a real lamb of a guy. And even in our day, a a president that's going out uh, to consider it a, a, a lamb would not be a very powerful name. When the stock market uh, is doing really well, it's doing great, it's a a bull market. I can't imagine investors thinking uh, it's good news to to think of it as a lamb of a market. Also in Jesus' day, because of the long history of Israel uh, using lambs and sacrifices, there is a sense of hearing Jesus as lamb that it might strike up something at being cruel. Maybe like today, calling someone a turkey a dumb bunny, uh, calling Jesus a lamb may have sounded equivalent to accusing Jesus of a, a little dumb or easy one to, to gang up on. It does make you wonder what the disciples thought when they decided to hitch up on the wagon of this particular star. Was Jesus going to going places or was he going nowhere? It's interesting to think, what was it that made them make that decision? Was Jesus going places or was he going nowhere? Whether John's title meant that Jesus was very meek or destined for the chopping block, either way, it didn't seem to indicate Jesus to be a very effective person in the long run. Nice guys finish last and sacrificial lambs just finish eventually. Yet John adds a kicker of a line that somehow this someone, this particular lamb, like Jesus, takes away the sin of the world. So now we have an image of a lamb and a concept of sin. And since the only traditional connection between lamb and sin always involves death, clearly John was introducing this hapless lamb with a very dark theme. This isn't the kind of thing you say to, about someone when uh, uh, on their way to the top of the world's heap. It's not what you would expect of a Messiah. Not how you would describe, cer- certainly not describe a celebrity on the red carpet, or surely it wouldn't be the first thing to say. As John the Baptist does, someone that you've just met for the first time. 
John could have easily have said, behold, one who is going down the tubes. Behold the loser, victim, dead man walking. How odd it must have sounded. How odd it must have sounded the next day when G John repeats it, letting you know it's not some foolish slip of the tongue. This certain was who Jesus was to be, central to who he was. What an oddness of a phrase, what a wonder, what an amazing gratitude for such a Messiah. But no wonder so many of his own missed him, as the text said last week. As you read Immerse, as we join in this, looking at the Messiah, I don't want you to miss either him either. I don't want you to miss uh, being around him and seeing who he is. And it's so easy for us to, to not recognize him. Think about our culture people in Hollywood that uh, shower themselves with awards. Uh, in February, there's the Golden Globe Awards. Uh, in other fields, uh, say journalism and literature, there's a Pulitzer Prize. And in sciences, there's a Nobel Prize. My favorite is uh, Christianity Today's Book of the Year Award. But I'd say there's none more uh, than it relates to entertainment. There's the Golden Globe Awards, the People's Choice Awards, New York Films Critics, the Cane Film Festival Awards, the Tonys, the Grammys, the Emmys, American Film Institute, uh, Screen Actors Guild, and probably the big one of them all, the Academy Awards. Uh, I have friends who have a big party. Uh, they look forward to watching the red carpet, all of the things that go on beforehand, the velvet ropes courting off as they come down with their, their new clothes on and the bleachers are uh, filled with spect spectators who have been around and waiting for a long time. The limo pulls up, depositing its precious cargo and cheers scream as Chris Pine and Tom Hanks or Beyonce or Meryl Streep, high profile trek of, of young and old go down the red carpet stopping at the microphones. Amazing amount of excitement generated by the right kind of person simply walking past you. What a contrast to John chapter one. Never in a more important uh, celebrity than Jesus. Yet John one makes it clear, without some extra divine help, hardly able to pick Jesus out of the crowd. A lot of people walking around, a lot of people around there, but even John the Baptist admits if, it, if God hadn't let him see a spirit descending on Jesus like a dove, he had not known it was Jesus who it was. If you look at John 1 from the right angle, John 1 almost looks hilarious, being so understated. Jesus, no red carpet walk, not a bread pit type, uh, a center of attention whenever he went, to, uh, causing us to crane our necks. Small wonder people missed recognizing Jesus. And we for sure miss him today. If you're getting an autograph from uh, Julia Roberts or Leonardo DiCaprio, and Jesus brushed past us, and I think we would never see him. May even accuse him of bumping into us. Uh, Jesus' first words though, when he speaks to them, appears in the form of an ordinary question, but an extraordinary significance. What are you looking for? John 1, verse 38. English translations obscure the meaning of the Greek. It better be translated, what are you seeking? What are you seeking after? What are you seeking? Jesus' ministry begins. Not a mighty command to silence the demon, as in the book of Mark. Not a sermon to the crowds that gathered on a mountain like in the book of Matthew. Not a quotation from Isaiah proclaiming his anointing for the year of God's favor as in the book of Luke. It begins with a question. What are you seeking? What are you looking for? The question that's worth wrestling with. It's a question worth wrestling with as individuals, as families, and as a congregation. What are you seeking? What motivates you? What are you looking for? Jesus poses a question. Poses it to John's disciples who had just learned that Jesus was the Lamb of God and yet they determined to follow him. Note the many verses for seeing. It's in the Greek, blepo in verse 29, aid in verse 29 and verse 6, theomi 
It's in verse 32 and 38. Ora and Idon is in 33 through 34 and verse 39. In Bleppo in verse 36 and 42, the word sea translated as sea, but in many different contexts in the Greek. I think it points to the significance of a combined weight with an emphasis on Jesus' answer. He says, come and see. Come and see. The primary message of John's gospel is if you want to know come and see Jesus. If you want to know what love looks like, come and see me. Come and see Jesus. Want to experience God's glory? Be filled with bread that never perishes. Quench your thirst of living water. Be born again. Abide in love. Behold the light of the world. Experience the way, the truth, the life. Enter into life everlasting. Want to know God? Come see Jesus. Jesus offers us an invitation to change our lives. He says, come and see. I want to invite you to take up the Messiah and to read through the New Testament, opening up our eyes to uh, humility to experience Jesus in new ways. The disciples, no idea what they were getting into. Andrew goes and gets his brother and says, come see this guy. And Jesus says, come and see. The disciples stumbled along, following without knowing where they were going, willing to follow, discovering after the fact, as they wandered the path, that it leads to, to grace. Jesus says, come and see. Soon you're going to taste water that, uh, that, that turns water into wine and watch the horrors of Jesus clear, clearing the temples. They would see things that they never expected. They listened with amazement as the words to Nicodemus to say, you know, the Spirit of God blows wherever it wills. Good question for us. What are we looking for in the year 2021? Deep in our souls, I think we're looking for something to believe in. Something in our culture to hold on to. Something important enough to live for. Something big enough to claim our passions. I think we're looking for a challenge, a purpose. We're looking for God. I want to ask you, invite you to look beyond uh, your screen, your computers, your, your, even your coffee cup that maybe has you this morning. God is one who makes us long for something that lasts. God draws us towards a life and even when we don't recognize what's happening. I know it's been an adventure for me and one that I wouldn't trade for anything. Come and see. Come and see how the disciples' story begins. What a wonderful line, a great way to start a story. What a great way to start this new year. Come and see. An invitation to explore and discover. Travel without knowing. Catch a glimpse of God. Come and see. Come and see what it means to hope believe and follow. Yakima Covenant Church, let's open our eyes, ourselves, to God. They lead Yakima Covenant into new places. They look for God, a, a spirit of adventure. Ask God to help us see where grace invites us. What gifts has God given us here in Yakima Covenant Church, and how are we to use those to address the needs that are right here in our community? Look for the Lamb of God, may be disguised, but may we open our eyes to hear him speak. Let's pray. God, I give you thanks for uh, being the Messiah, that you go beyond our own uh, ways of thinking and how we would picture you to come. We give you thanks that you are Agnes Day, that you are the one that uh, takes away the sin of the world. God, you are the one that can bring life and light and meaning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now see the light of morning, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, a child to us is born. Behold the Lamb of God, 
who takes away our sin. Behold the Lamb of God, the life and light of men. Behold the Lamb of God, who died and rose again. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away our sin. Wanders in the wilderness, oh hear a voice is crying, prepare the way, make straight the path, your King has come to die. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away our sin. God, the life and light of men. Behold the Lamb of God, who died and rose again. Behold the Lamb of God, who comes to take our sin, Son of God, Son of Man, behold the Lamb of Take away our sin.